In this video, we'll discuss the SQL Data Connection object. Data connections are responsible for handling the physical communication between a data store, such as SQL Server or an Access Database or Oracle, and your .NET application. The connection object is, is part of a data provider, and there's two basic data providers that come with .NET Framework. The first one is the OLEDB uh, data provider, and that one allows you to, to access any type of database that you can usually hit with OLE. And that would include Access or Oracle or SQL Server or any other type of, of data provider. So it's very generic. And then there's the SQL uh, data provider, which is specific only to SQL Server. So it has some optimizations. It has some extra properties and some methods that allow you to kind of get uh, closer to, uh, to SQL's optimization features. And so there are only two data providers right now, but over time, more data providers will probably be created by uh, various vendors. For example, Oracle may or may not create a data provider for .NET in the future, or some third party might do it, and so that you can take advantage of some of Oracle's optimizations uh, from within .NET. But for the purpose of this video and this, the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking mainly about the SQL um, data providers, and specifically the SQL Data Connection. As we noted just a moment ago, the Data Connection uh, allows you to connect to a data source. And so what we're going to do is take a look at how to programmatically connect to a data source. Then I'm going to show you at the very end of the video a real quick and easy way to also create a data connection. But we'll also take a look at um, some of the properties of a data connection, and some of the methods and things that you can do with it. So the first thing that I want to demonstrate is basically whenever uh, we open up our application, we need to create, first of all, a import statement to import the correct uh, data provider. In this case, we're importing the uh, namespace system.data.sqlclient. You must do that, or you'll have to type out the entire system.data.sqlclient dot whatever every time you want to use uh, a, uh, an object from that, uh, from that namespace. The next thing you'll notice that we do within our class is we create a private variable con as a SQL connection. And when the form loads for our uh, WinForm application, you'll notice that we take our value of con and set it equal to a new instance of the SQL connection object. Now these two lines of code we'll talk about in a few moments. These are delegates that allow us to trap uh, events that were raised by the connection. So in our little application here, what we've done is created two buttons, a start and a stop. When somebody clicks the start button, what it will do is cr open the connection to the database, uh, and it will also display all the properties that we can derive from, uh, from the connection object, such as the connection string, the timeout, the state, which is basically is it open or closed, and there's several different states. We'll talk about those in a moment. Um, the data source, the database, the workstation ID, the server version and the packet size. And then when we click the stop button, uh, we'll actually uh, then close the database connection. So let's start off by taking a look at the code behind the start button. I'll double click the start button and we'll notice some of the things about um, the properties that we're going to collect off of the, uh, of the connection object. The first thing that I do is I set the connection string. The connection string is a series of commands to the connection object to tell it where to look or what server to look at, um, the initial database that should be opened up, in other words, uh, the initial catalog that should be used. In this case, we're going to use the pubs database from that's, that's provided for free by SQL Server as an example database. Also, user ID and password information, and then some various other settings regarding security, the workstation ID, packet size, uh, which is the, uh, the amount of information that should be sent back and forth from the client. And then we'll actually open the connection. Once we open the connection, we'll have available many read-only properties, such as the, uh, the connection string. We can read that back out, the connection timeout, the current state of, of, the, apple, of the connection, rather, the data store source, the workstation ID, the server version, the database, and the packet size. You'll notice that many of these properties were set in our connection string to begin with. However, we still have programmatic access to these values uh, through the connection object. So let's go ahead and run our application. So 
So what we're going to do is click our Start button. And when we do, after just a moment, you'll notice that our form is populated, our labels are populated with all the values that we input. So we can see the connection string, the timeout, what the current state is, it's open, the data source, and so on. So there's nothing really here that um, that we weren't expecting because, after all, most of these values were actually passed into the connection string. At this point, I want to talk about the state. When you first open an application, uh, open a connection, rather, um, the first type of state that you'll uh, experience is the state of connecting. And this is when the connection is in the process of trying to connect, but ha the connection hasn't yet been opened. And then the next state is the open state where we're at right now, where it's open, but it's idle. And then there's the state of fetching, uh, when the connection is actually retrieving data, or the executing state, whenever the connection is actually executing a command like an insert or an update. And then there's also the, uh, the closed state, which is after you've closed the connection down. And then finally, there's a broken state, which means that the connection is open, but it's not functional because it may have been closed and reopened, or for some reason, uh, the pointer is just not there any longer. So you can trap these states by using um, built-in events to the connection object. You have to, from within your application, tell, your, uh, tell the connection object what function should be called when a certain event is raised, and you do that through the use of delegates. I'm not going to explain the use of delegates here. This is more of a topic for uh, the Visual Basic OO and C Sharp OO uh, series. However, we're going to see it in action in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and close down our application. And then I'm going to uncomment out some lines of code <clears throat> that basically add a handler. And the first one we'll do is, is uh, the state change handler. So this says, add a handler to the connection object. It's of type state change and create a new state change event handler using this function and you're going to pass in the memory address of that function. So what we want to do now is take a look at the function that we've actually are going to use to um, capture any state change information. So whenever the state changes, so for example, whenever it goes from open to uh, to close, we'll get a we'll get a, me a message pop up. So we'll take a look at our con state change. In order to make this um, event uh, trappable, we have to uh, basically accept two parameters: a sender object as uh, a sender as object rather, and then an args as a state change event args. And we'll use that state change event args instance called args to grab off some properties such as the original state and the current state. And we'll display those in a message box. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and select Run. And so now when I click the Start button, what will happen is an event will be triggered because the state of our connection object has changed. Notice that our a little message box pops up and it says the state was closed, but it has changed to open. And you select OK and then it populates all of our information. And then in our stop button, we're only doing a, basically a connection dot close. And when we click on that, it says the state was open, but has changed to closed. Okay, so we can trap the events. And um, the important thing about this is that if your application is uh, going to try and execute some a query, you may want to check the state first, and if there is a problem, if there's some type of error and you want to trap that error, you can maybe try to make the connection again and again until uh, you have a successful attempt and then execute the query. So you can make your applications more foolproof by checking the state and some of these other properties that are available to you. We also have another event that we capture from the connection object, and that's the info message. And the info message is basically whenever there's an error that's experienced within the connection object that we can capture the SQL info message event handler. And we're going to set it to the address of the function connection underscore info message. So let's take a look at that function right now to see what it can do. So here's our connection info message um, event handler. And notice again that in order for it to be a valid event handler for the info message event, 
we have to have a sender as object parameter and also an args as SQL rather info message event args. We'll use that instance of that, um, the SQL info message event args, in order to extract some information. For example, we're going to find out what the source of the problem was, and we'll even pop up uh, an error message um, that can say something to the effect of the following messages uh, were sent from the data provider, and you can get the args message and the args source. It also returns back uh, an errors collection. So if you're familiar with the old ADO uh, connection object, there was an errors collection. Well, it doesn't quite work the same way that it did in ADO. In ADO.net, you have to capture the info message uh, event, and then you can iterate through all the errors and display information, log those errors, or whatever the case might be. But this code actually accomplishes that, where we actually go through um, the args.errors.count and loop through them and continue to create a series of messages that are displayed in a message box. And we could just as easily have written these out to a log file. But we get information such as the error's number, the error's source, the error state, the error server, the error procedure, the error message, and the error line number. And these are all values that are returned to us, in this case, from SQL Server so that we can uh, either log or maybe make some programmatic decisions based on what these problems were, maybe make the correction and then attempt to run that query or that, um, that uh, uh, command again. And then we simply just display these in the message box. Now, the only way that this would work is if we actually had some errors and I wasn't able to reproduce any errors. But Later on in the uh, uh, in the series, we're going to talk more specifically about errors and try to try to break our applications and then catch them and display the errors from this errors collection. So to recap, I just want to go over some very important things. First of all, whenever you want to create a connection object, uh, you have to first of all, or you should rather, import the system.data.sql client namespace. The next thing that you should do is create. A, um, a variable that's uh, of type SQL connection. And then at some point in your application, in my case, the page load, what you'll do is, um, if I can find it here real quick. There we go. You'll create a new instance of that SQL connection object and set that instance equal to our con variable. Now what we also did here was we added some um, handlers for events uh, to capture off any error information or messages that come back from SQL Server, and then also be able to capture any uh, state changes of the connection object and be able to um, uh, post messages or, or change uh, the state of the application whenever it changes or respond to it. And then finally, what you'll need to do in order to create a connection is to set the connection string and then also select the connection.open. And then you're able to retrieve off various pieces of information as we did. And what we did was create a programmatic uh, connection to, um, uh, to the SQL Server using the, the data connection object and typing everything out. There's another simple way to do this, actually. And that is to merely, and I'll just demonstrate this by going to the Solution Explorer, right-clicking our project and selecting Add and you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to add a new Windows form. We're just going to call form 2. That's fine. And what I'm going to do is go to um, my server explorer, and I'm going to drag and drop an existing connection, for example, from the pubs database down onto uh, my design surface. And when I do that, you notice that there are a lot of the properties, such as the connection, the connection timeout, the database, the data source, and so on, is already set for me, so I don't have to do that programmatically by setting the connection string. There's another way to do this as well. I'm going to go ahead and delete that and then just drag and drop, uh, sorry, from the toolbox. We'll go to the data um, tab within the toolbox and select um, SQL data connection and drag and drop that and put that on our form. Now, when we do that, we're still going to have to configure it. So we may have to you know, select and hit properties and then come over here and fill out some things like the, the connection string. Uh, but we can actually select the existing connection strings from this drop-down box that we found from our existing set of data connections here. 
So it's pretty much six of one, half a dozen of the other, as the old saying goes. But for the purposes of our example, we wanted to show how to do this programmatically, and so that's exactly what we accomplished. I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about uh, the connection object, and we're going to use this as the foundation for the future videos within this series. Thank you.